Thor Love and Thunder or as I like to call it Thor 4 with Thor and Mighty Thor featuring Gar and the more. Well, that's a mouthful. Well, if you don't find that name funny, chances are you are not going to like most of the jokes used in this movie as comedy and that's for sure. Anyway, the first thing I want to get off my chest, I kind of liked it, this movie, which by no means makes this a good movie, but still. Now people say not every comedy is for everyone and that was pretty true because throughout the movie I wasn't laughing but there were many people in the theater I was in who were cheering, laughing, hooting. They were doing it so much that I missed half the dialogues so I had to watch the movie a second time. Now, after watching the movie two times, I feel the movie misses the good old emotional scene. One scene for example, when we see Jane Foster for the first time, it is shown that she had cancer which is pretty saddening for any audience with some family or friends suffering from the same. But to my surprise, everyone was cheering for her because this is her long awaited comeback which was kind of weird but that's not fault of the movie because it's a, it's a big return to the MCU after all. So people are excited. Makes sense. Maybe. I don't know. But in the middle section of the movie, there is a scene where Jane Foster gets in her room and stands in front of some mirrors and drops the hammer and we see that inside the shiny Thor's armor, she is a weakling patient of cancer and is dying, which was supposed to be impactful. The next scene, Valkyrie comes in to visit her and they had a joke about Bluetooth speaker as if that's a new thing and both Jen and Valk were vibing to it. Wow, it's not like this happens just once. This happens many times. If you have watched Deadpool 2, that is also a character who is suffering from cancer. In Deadpool 2, you see Ryan Reynolds' character, or Wade Wilson, gets a collar which removes his superpower, making him full of cancer. So, in that scene, he makes jokes. He's Ryan Reynolds. He's definitely going to make jokes about it. But that scene, those few moments, you feel the pain in his eyes or the dialogue delivery. But in this movie, there is nothing. Nope, there isn't anything. Emotion. From the trailer, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy are in the movie and you definitely expected them to leave the movie very early on because it's a Thor movie after all. So, the Guardians comes to the movie, does stuff, gets away, which doesn't make any emotional attachment whatsoever. If you remember, in Infinity War, they had a scene where Chris Hemsworth and Chris Pratt were having a banter about who got the best body or who is like the captain or something. Those were like funny banters which are supposed to be in this movie. They kinda are in this movie but doesn't feel the same which makes me feel weird. And the Guardians of the Galaxy gets replaced by screaming goats. Seriously, they were not even funny 5-10 years back. I mean, I don't know why that Guardians leaving the movie should have been a heavy scene but was undermined by just fucking screaming goats. Nice. And some people, yes, in my theater, did laugh at those. So, I guess they succeeded. I don't know what happened. Maybe some of the cast or crew saw those screaming goat videos on YouTube, TikTok or somewhere. So they thought it's funny and they use this gag in this movie and yeah I have to agree that I laughed two times and the rest ten or more times it feels unnecessary. Now there is one example of a good thing which Taika did in this movie so it's not all shit. There are scenes where you see the rivalry between Thor's current hammer and his ex-hammer. Mjolnir and Stormbreaker. Like whenever Thor gets too close to Mjolnir, Stormbreaker comes in and interrupts. Which is like, I don't know, it was funny. Anyway, just before the third act of the movie, there is a scene where Mighty Thor, Thor Thor and Valkyrie fights Gar and are defeated. Valkyrie gets stabbed in the back and Jen Foster is on the brink of death. Thor lost his Stormbreaker which was supposed to be the MacGuffin for Gar. So, Guess what our heroes does at their lowest of lows? Well, nothing. So, the next 15 minutes or so were spent with Thor talking and all he does is be a comic relief. Which is utter bullshit. Cause the urgency they introduced, like a ticking timer as you may call. Cause it was the most important thing they have to predict. But no, they just went there talking and putting the plot at a halt. So, as if it's not urgent. 
And if the characters in the movie doesn't feel any urgency, why should we the audience feel any urgency? Well, if you are still there, why not subscribe and do all the things all other YouTubers ask you to do while I complete the video. Else, I have to do the shameless plugins. Where was I? Well, ah, yeah, I was, I was bitching about it. Taika. So let's say some good about him. Now, Thor Ragnarok is one of my favorite MCU movies as it perfectly uses the comic timing. So it feels all natural and to be honest, it was not supposed to feel organic because the last two Thor movies were with Thor being a stoic dark guy. And the last Thor movie before Ragnarok has dark in its title. So Taika Waititi changing the character into a comedy guy was supposed to be jarring but it didn't fell out of place even once because in that movie Thor was not the goofball or the comic relief because we had the greats like Jeff Goldblum, Tom Hiddleston and Mark Ruffalo who are all with Thor making the funny scenes funnier and Ragnarok has good writing they give Hulk a different personality compared to Bruce Banner only by dialogues but just like any other phase 4 movie or TV show good writing is out of the picture and love and thunder being in phase 4 is no different there are scenes where Thor is giving godly speeches or monologue that's supposed to hook us in for the journey up ahead but out of the blue he tells some comical thing and the whole build up and the talking makes no sense at all so why waste a five minute with a fucking monologue in the movie gar kidnaps some kids so when thor goes to save the day he gives a speech about what he's going to do and all and he is like we're going to bring back the kids and then feast which was okay and then was like we are not supposed to feast on the kids which no one thought that why would anyone think that it just flattens anything that has to do it just wears the whole the monologue so i I have been talking a lot about Thor, so let's talk about Gore. Christian Bale is nearly perfect as Gore has. He is menacing when needed and sympathetic when he's supposed to be. It was a great balance, as all things should be. And as we know, Thor is supposed to be the comic relief in his own movie. Someone has to carry it on their back. It was done by Gore, who moves the plot forward even when he is not on screen and yes when i say he is moving the plot not being on screen it's literally something that happens in the movie the character called gar the god butcher he kind of doesn't do that much of butchering because all is done off screen and the only time i see him do something well he kind of decapitates a god being out of focus and yeah the funniest part is thor killed more gods than the god butcher cause taika got the free reign over blood as as blood and gore in this movie is not red blood it's a golden blood and still a pg-13 movie so he got overboard and thor literally does so much killing without blood and gore of course i won't talk about the post credit scene because i don't want to spoil it but one thing i can say it creates another mess and makes character death even more meaningless and by the end of the movie thor gets a daughter valk and thor they are walking through their new asgard with all new training montages of asgardians and things are pretty much same as they were at end of the last movie i mean end of ragnarok i don't know what to say about this thing but this is a problem for mcu when a super connected franchise has to release a solo movie with the solo villain for a single movie if feels kind of generic cause they can't be a massive threat as a whole Avengers has to come in and if the threat is not at all threatening then the movie won't happen with a A-lister superhero that won't work out it's like you can't have Thor fight some tracksuit mafia or Hawkeye with a bow and arrow fight a god butcher that would be weird so this is a very weird situation for MCU moving forward this movie is one of the low tier MCU movies for me and MCU doesn't care whether you like the movie or not cause at this point it's like MCU by Disney is a company making product if you like the product it's good but if you don't like the product then move to the next one
Hopefully you will like the next product and if not, well, we are giving you a sneak peek in the form of post credit scene for the next product. Marvel has a whole phase 4 plan so you liking a movie or hating the movie will affect the release chart that they had in store for us cause it's like they are throwing darts in the dark room. Throwing one dart in the dark room might miss the board through a hundred darts and maybe one would stick on the board. So it's like MC is pushing quantity over quality and the quality does take a nosedive in phase 4. If you saw the Disney Plus shows, you would know that. And with that said, I feel like I don't have anything more to say for now. Hope to meet you in the future.